Hi, I'm John. And I'm Melanie. And this is our Tiny House on Wheels Serenitas. She is an 8x18 Tiny House on Wheels, and we have been tiny for over two years. go heading on to E64 Tiny House Rolling <laughs> originally decided to go tiny. Well, we've been looking at it for about six months and we, uh, I had been through six layoffs in seven years and we're just getting frustrated with trying to keep up on the rent and keep up on the bills and every time there was a layoff we were just terrified to lose everything again. December of 17, I came home right before Christmas, Christmas um, two days maybe before Christmas, with a layoff. And we sat down and we talked and I said, you know what, let's just do it. We built our house at a workshop. We did it in seven days. Uh, A workshop in Tennessee with incredible tiny homes. And the five of us built it in seven days. We showed up, the only thing that was there was the studs, the plywood on the outside and the metal roof. And we did everything from the hardwood floors all the way to the tongue and groove on the ceiling. They provided the tools, a supervisor to help instruct us, somewhere to sleep, and the meals. It was a lot of work, but it was very much well worth it. Our living room was designed to be as functional as possible. And I like to call it a transformer living room because that's exactly what it does. So we have two hammocks. And when we want to eat dinner, we can just flip up our table and put the stick underneath it. So we don't actually set a bowl or a plate or anything right here. We usually end up holding them and then we'll set a drink here. Or we use it to just set things on when we're sitting in the hammocks. We have a desk on the wall. It's held by chains, but when it comes up to the top here, we have magnets. So it'll just attach itself to the wall like that. Underneath we have holes that come out the bottom so that we can plug everything in. And then we have a spot at the top where we can just reach in and grab something out when we need. So we don't have to open the desk up all the time if we don't don't need to get in it all the time. One of the cool parts about having our space open up like this with the hammocks away is that we can actually do exercise. Up against the wall here you'll see that we have We have hooks that attach to eye hooks on the wall. And there's one at the top and then there's one at the bottom. So we clip clip them in and you can come over and work out. (laughs) And also readjust it all the way down here. And then I can come over here and do my exercises like this too. We have a storage closet in the back. And this opens up and it holds our coats on a little coat rack. And then we have a pull out shelf here. And this is really cool because it has paracord on the sides. So you can get all of your jars in and out really easy. And this little guy is also a pull out rack. And we keep our cleaning supplies in this. Comes all the way forward. This one's shorter than the other one because it was a custom build and we did it so that we would have a spot to put the yoga mat. (laughs) Storage in here and this holds our dry goods. This step also opens up and it holds all the puppy stuff. This step does not open and you can see that there's a vent on the front of it. The reason that we put a vent there is to allow airflow for our puppy cubby. So underneath the steps, we actually have a spot down here for Shiloh. Hi, (laughs) Shiloh. And what we did underneath here is we added a subfloor. And so we have it lifted about a quarter of an inch off the floor with a flat, um, with flat wood that runs all the way across. And then we put carpet on top of that and we have the puppy cubby 
blankets and that allows air to move underneath the floor to help prevent condensation or anything in the small space so this is all his space and he loves it and he stays in there a lot inside of this is dog food and it has like a planter box that sits inside of it and it's that way it's not just all wood or crumbs so it can be cleaned out really easy our bottom step completely comes off so it separates itself from the staircase and that's what holds our gloves and our scarf it also pushes all the way back in so that it doesn't interfere with actually walking through the front door so we designed our home to be very simple yeah melanie wanted to have a passive heating and cooling as much as possible so this one wall there's just the one window the other main wall there's four windows and then there's windows on either end so we get a nice cross breeze most of the year we wanted it to be as energy efficient as possible as well so most of the or all of the lighting in the house is led and the uh, toilet is composting so there's no wasted water there and when we originally built the house we had a water reclamation system that we also got and that would recycle the gray water uh, through a whole bunch of different filters and uv and ozonator and whatnot and uh, made it usable so we could recycle it in the shower and, and whatnot you wouldn't drink it of course but since we've got on the, out on the property we're hooked up to our well now so i've converted that system to just thoroughly filtering the well water we also have a mini split in the uh, in the house that is really efficient it'll cook you out of here if you're not careful yeah and we have a propane on demand hot water system in the tongue box so we don't have to use any electricity there and we have um, a little mr buddy backup propane heater just in case we lose power and uh, we've heard other tiny house dwellers mentioned concerns about humidity in, in such a small space. We really haven't noticed that too much, but we have two little uh, little bitty guy dehumidifiers, one in the kitchen and one in the bathroom. So welcome to my tiny house on wheels kitchen. <laughs> we decided to put our kitchen on the end. Most of the tiny houses that we had seen, they had done them like a galley. So you had the stairs on one side and you had the kitchen on the other and you had a walkway. We wanted to leave our living space open. So we opted to put our kitchen on the end of our tiny house. It makes it about eight feet wide. So there's a nice big section to use. We also designed this space to be as simple as possible. So we don't have an oven or a stove or a dishwasher or microwave or any of that kind of stuff to cook on. We decided that we were gonna go with an induction hot plate. I also use a toaster oven. I have an Instapot and we have a magic bullet and we use a French press for our coffee. Some of our really cool storage in our kitchen we have across the ceiling up here mason jars and they can twist and come down across this wall over here we have storage um, we have a knife rack a magnetic knife rack and instead of putting knives on it we have all of our silverware on it we have a mini fridge off on this side and it does have a a freezer inside of it and also has a crisper on the bottom. We have a really large sink right in the middle and this is really nice because we have a floating dish rack so it sits down inside the sink. We have like a little banana holder. We've also gotten rid of plates and bowls kind of stuff so what we do now is we have what are called plate bowls and these have flat bottoms. So the little compartment here originally was just a board that was attached to the counter as um, a decorative piece, but we decided to make it functional so it actually does now open up and hide away. We have a rack here that also opens up and this stretches all the way to the back again. Part of our build here, we had originally a great big huge drawer and it was like the drawer of nightmares because it had just you know it's a massive drawer and everything would just get thrown in there 
So we added all of these little compartments inside of it. These cabinets underneath here were originally just a great big huge open area and my husband added these drawers. He built them and put them on extension slides so we can actually utilize the space all the way to the back. Originally I had to get down on my knees and dig back there and stack stuff up and it just it was not usable. Underneath the sink I have a pull out trash can. It's divided with two compartments so that we can separate out our recycling and our paper because we burn that and then we have compost. So it's essential to have two different compartments. So we purchased our land October of last year and we spent a lot of time going through zoning and the health department and figuring out what permits we would need to be legal on our own property. We ended up needing an electrical permit and we needed a sewer permit to be legal and a driveway permit from VDOT. We looked at three different properties. The other two were like virgin properties so we would have had to clear cut trees and do all that kind of stuff and put in a well and septic and everything and that's, that's not cheap at all. So we found this property, it was a little bit further away and the reason that nobody was buying it was because it had a burnt down house on it. And because of that burnt down house, we have an electric pole, we have a well, we have a septic tank, we have a drain field, we have a driveway. So it was a perfect setup for us. Down one whole side of our property is a stream, which is really pretty and we've cut trails around to walk it. So this is our bedroom loft. It's about 54 inches high. So when I actually like stand on my knees, I'm not even hitting my head. We have hopper windows on each side, which gives us a really nice cross breeze at night. So we have this tri compartment so we can access them without having to move everything onto the bed because they're each their own little flap. We built these little shelves and there's one in each corner so they're reverse shelves for each side and this way we're able to not have to set everything on the side of the bed or have it you know laying on the floor so the window behind me is a 3030 emergency egress safety window which is required in loft we also have um an ipad mount that attaches to our ceiling here our home is not hooked up for cable or internet so we can take our cell phones and we can hotspot to be able to watch a movie. The nice part about this is this whole piece is removable. There we go. Um, this whole chunk comes down and there's a whole other piece like this that's mounted in our other loft. So we can literally just take this over to our other loft and watch a movie on it too. Okay, we'll take you upstairs and show you the little loft. But first, to get up there, we have our ladder mounted on the wall. So we just pull it off the wall. And there's felt, there's felt uh, bar stool feet mounted on the bottom so it doesn't mess up the floor. You fold that forward and tuck that out of the way. And then we can go up. And this is our little loft. It's four feet deep. It says right above the kitchen. Uh, we have these chair recliners. We got these, I think, off Amazon. This just pulls forward and it can lay down. Make a bed out of it. And those just pushed back out of the way. And uh, Melanie uses, like I said, uses this for her business. We only pay with the $30 a month co-op fee on top of it. We still only pay $75 at most for electricity. Yeah. Yep. And that running the well and the heaters. We have a heater in the tongue box to keep the water heater from freezing and stuff like that. Our mortgage runs us $98 a month. <laughs> so between that and the electric bill, I don't really know how much freer you can live in the U.S., but I think that the whole idea behind going tiny and downsizing and minimizing for us has paid off because now we, we're pretty much recession proof. I mean, we can work part-time jobs and pay our bills. We just got our taxes on the land and our assessment since we purchased the land. 
has almost doubled since we've moved on it. So now we have more equity in six months in our land than when we bought it. So that's pretty awesome to be able to step into a property like that. Mm -hmm.